Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show how we can use Excel and Power BI to store the training related data for employees and create very effective reports in Power BI, which will help us make data driven decisions to improve the return on investment on our training program. My name is Dinesh Narajan Mohan and I publish templates on inzara.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about the training dashboard Power BI template. This solution uses Microsoft Excel and Power BI, and we enter the data in Excel, and then we do a one-time connect from Power BI file to the Excel file, and then we visualize the reports in Power BI. Anytime when you have new data in Excel, when you update it, the training information, then you can go to Power BI and hit refresh to get the updated reports. That is how simple as it is. So now I'm going to go and walk you through what data we enter in Excel. So here I am in the setting sheet, which is again as all the usual settings information around office locations, gender, ethnicity, um, department names, job types, job uh, categories, job level, job titles, uh, exit reasons. We will also enter a list of skills um, that we want to track in the employees in our company, uh, which days of the week are weekends, what are the holidays in the company and so on. So these are settings that we enter so that we can customize all of this for the specific um, list of values that are relevant for your company. Now, in the skill profiles, this is where we can define a set of profiles. Um, you can think of profile as a combination of skills at certain levels and an employee, depending on which profile they belong to. For example, if it's a new employee who is just getting started at an entry level uh, in the finance team, maybe you expect certain skills and certain levels. But if it's an experienced employee in a different uh, uh, job level, then you expect skills, different skills, and also at different levels. That is what you can define in the skill profiles. Once you define this, we will later assign each employee to a profile. So we'll come to that later. For now, I'm going to go to the employee sheet, which is where we enter the list of all the employees we have and all their attributes like department, location, job level, job titles, and all that. Then we go to employee updates. Whenever an employee's information changes, for example, if the employee gets promoted, job title changes, depart, they move from one department to another, or they um, you know, have a change in the manager, or they move from one location to another, or whatever. All of this, you will just enter a new record in this table reflecting the change. And then finally, exits is where if an employee has decided to leave, then you enter the employee and the when they left and what type of uh, exit it is and uh, the reason for exit. Then we go to the skills table. The skills table is where, um, as I told you a couple of minutes ago, you can assign an employee to a skill profile. So for example, Danielle Ross, I'm assigning that employee to the design lead profile, which means we expect the project management skill level to be very high. We don't. Ex we expect the communication could be low. Uh, strategic thinking could be low. Analysis uh, should be medium level, and then technical is none. So this is a combination. We are saying again, this is all just random data, sample data, but you can define in the skill profiles what is the expected skills and what level do you expect for this profile and you can assign an, all these employees you can assign them to specific profiles then you would also record what is the actual skill level of daniel ross okay for project management it is high for communication even though we don't expect that employee to have very high communication but maybe the employee does have high communication level skills, so we would mark them as high. So this is where you define and enter, define the expectation as well as enter the actual skill level of each employee. So this is an extremely critical um, data point that we need to make sure that it's accurate and complete because 
once you know which employee um, has which skill um, that is needed to be improved, then that feeds into the training program. So now when you go to the training sheet and you want to create a list of trainings for the employees, you need to know which skills are needed uh, or in demand from the employee so that then you can create the right training programs. So here I have a list of all the training uh, courses or classes that we have and then from which date to which date is it available, who is the trainer, is it internal or external training, is it um, in person or online, uh, what type of training or category and what subcategory. So all of that information along with how much is it cost per person, uh, how many hours of training, how many seats are available in that training, you will enter that information here for each training. Then final input is enrollments. This is where you say this specific employee, you choose the employee, you choose which training um, that person is attending and the date when the employee will start the training. Uh, and then you can also enter the status. So did the employee complete or just enroll in it or complete it or ended up canceling it. So you can choose those status. Um, and this is um, the rating is something that you will enter for a, a an employee or an enrollment after they finish the training uh, what how do they rate that specific training uh, and you can enter a number reflecting the rating and finally benefit so this is where um, you as a manager or maybe um, uh, the hiring manager or the uh, person who is in a position to evaluate the benefit that that training brought to the employee and the company so this is Again, this is not that easy, but this is an extremely important uh, input data to measure the value of the training to the company and the employee. So we will uh, record the benefit amount um, here for each enrollment. Okay, so that's everything about the input data. So now we're gonna go into the Power BI to see the output reports and let's take a look. So now I have the reports uh, in Power BI and this is the home page where you will see a bunch of key metrics around training. And in this video, I'm not gonna go into each of the metrics that we will save it for another video. But in this video, I'm just gonna give you an overview of all the reports that you get in Power BI. Um, you have the metrics displayed here in the home page. You can customize the time frame. Uh, if I wanna look at 18 months, I click on it and you can see that the numbers are changing. Um, and then here on the left, you have a, a bunch of links to the reports. So let's look at the skills report first. And if you remember in Excel, we were entering the information around what was the skill level that was um, uh, expected from each employee. And this chart summarizes the expected skill levels for each skill. Same thing here, the actual skill level. So how many employees have high um, level of strategic thinking skill, 71 employees. So you can see all of this and you can even customize or filter this report by, um, you know, I only want to look at the IT department or marketing department or so on. You can customize this or filter this. And then I, uh, the underskill percentage is a chart that shows uh, for each skill, what percentage of the employees who should be having that skill is actually underskilled? Um, underskilled means your actual skill is less than the expected skill. Doesn't mean that you, the skill is not present, it's just that it's less than the expected level. Um, and then you have uh, on the right side here by department, uh, within a specific department, how many employees are underskilled. And these information help you design and develop and plan for your training program. So what, what training should I be giving? Uh, what level, is it an advanced level training I should be giving or not? All of that is, is what you can use this report to um, decide on. And then once you decide that, you can even get the exact list of employees who should be invited to that training because you have that list of employees here on this report. So this is extremely helpful for you, for your training program to measure the actual skill levels, identify the gaps, which skills are needed, what levels, which employees need them, 
this is what feeds into your training uh, program. So I'm going to go back to the home page and I can go to the trainings list. And this is just a simple list of all the trainings that are currently open. Um, and in my sample data, I only have one training that is ongoing. Uh, but if you have more, it'll be listed here as all the trainings that are um, currently ongoing and how many seats are available, how many are um, seats are open, if there are any overbooking, uh, how many have enrolled, all of that information will be available to you. So I'm gonna go back to the home. The, the next report is training metrics. And here we have how many trainings are totally there, how many people have enrolled, what's the cost, how many hours have been trained, um, and then you can see the month by month trend uh, of these metrics um, you know, over time or months. And you can get important metrics like how many, what's the average rating of training, what's the cost per enrollment, um, how much does it cost per enrollment, how much does it cost per employee uh, when it comes to training over the last six months. So if I want to look at last 12 months, um, you can see that I can see more history and it's very interactive you can look at one department or one type of job or one training category so if i want to only look at project management training or if i want to only look at internal training versus external again it's endless um, uh, control uh, over the specific data that you need to look into you can do that i'm going to go back to the home page we have a couple more reports. So training by departments. So this is where you can analyze um, the departments across all these metrics that we looked at. So headcount, enrolled employees, what's the enrollment percentage, uh, which basically says if you have 24 employees, only four enrolled in training, you know, that's what the, um, that enrollment percentage is. When somebody enrolls, do they complete the training? What is the completion percentage? How much does it cost? How many hours did they get trained? Um, what's the benefit, what's the return on investment. So we know the cost, we know the benefit, so we calculate the return on, ben um, return on investment across all these departments. You can see which departments are performing well. Um, same thing on the top here, we rank based on the training ROI and which department is performing the best when it comes to uh, ROI, which department is performing best when it comes to enrollment percentage, completion percentage, and so on. Um, all these filters are still available. You can look at it for six months or the last 12 months or, you know, you can, it's very dynamic. So I'm going to go back to the home page. There is one more way, um, one more important piece of analysis that you need to do, which is uh, by uh, understand which trainings are more effective, right? So the previous report, we looked at which departments are making the best use of this, but this one looks at what type of training is it um, you know what category of training technical versus strategic thinking versus project management which ones are giving the most return on investment or I can even look at it by the trainer so if I click on the trainer I can see for each trainer um, how much um, uh, in terms of uh, trainings that they um, employees have completed and also how much does it cost per enrollment how many hours have they trained the employees what's the ROI from a trainer perspective so you can identify which trainers are the most effective uh, and then we can learn the best practices from them and implement across other trainers uh, same thing you can look at it by training name which specific training is the best ROI you can identify that as well um, you can also look at it by internal versus external trainings, which ones are better in what metric. You can look at it also by uh, in-person versus online training, which one is more effective. All of this information is extremely important for you to take decisions on what type of trainings you need to give, what, uh, what topics, who's the right trainer, uh, how should we deliver the training. All of that can be decided using solid reliable data and those decisions are uh, expected to be a lot more effective and accurate because you're relying on data to take those decisions so i'm going to go back to the home page again um, this uh, is all the reports we've already looked at it but i do want to open it and um, show you in power bi desktop so that you can see how it looks in power bi desktop so when you open our power bi file 
uh, in Power BI Desktop. Power BI Desktop is a free download available from Microsoft. You can then, you will, this is what you will see. And as I showed you, all these reports are there, but because you are opening it in Power BI Desktop, you have the ability to modify it if you need. If you're not familiar with Power BI, I would recommend to not modify anything. Um, just hit the refresh button uh, in order to get the latest data. Uh, but I do want to point out here that you have access to um, all this information on the right side, the, power, the metric library. So all these metrics are available for you to drag and drop and create your own reports if you're familiar with Power BI. We will have step-by-step um, -step instructions on how to use the template in general, like how do you connect from Power BI to Excel and all of that. If you have further questions, if you wanna um, customize it according to your company's unique needs, then feel free to reach out to support at inzara.com and uh, we'll see how we can work to help uh, this work the best for your company. Uh, if you have any other suggestions or questions, please put them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will be providing links to the product uh, in the product in the uh, video description below on inzara.com. And thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you soon in another video.